What's up, you guys? Welcome to Fightful. Sean Ross Sapp. It is April 10th, 2024. We have uh, closed out Mania. Well, the hell no, we haven't closed out Mania Week. There's still SmackDown. We still got that coming up on Friday. I mm. forgot. We're, well, we're here. We're here right now. We're here every night. Uh, every night, we got a post show. Please leave a thumbs up on this video. Leave us a nice review on audio platforms. For those of you who wondered where the live stream of The Hump was today, there was a StreamYard issue. It's fixed now. We have posted uh, the video here on YouTube. So check that out. Also, check out our new show with Andrew Zarian, Beyond the Bell. He also dropped an interview with Vinny Pacifico. Just a ton of stuff. So much content. So many different platforms. We're here to talk about AW Dynamite probably for a little bit. And <laughs> this damn video <laughs> for a very yeah. long time. We're going to yeah. be going back and forth throughout the show on this. We got Alex Pawlowski here. You can find him at Fightful Select with Sour Graps, as well as the post NXT review, uh, of which a person commented on Sour Graps the other day, and they yeah. said, oh, this shows your bias. If you really weren't biased, you'd have a Sour Graps AEW review. And I'm like, hey, that's every week on the main feed. And also... Alex has been reviewing Rampage and Collision for quite some time yep, that's true. behind yep. the paywall, mm -hmm. often yes. on those same shows in which he exactly. reviews WWE yes. shows. Yep. So, Alex, uh, wonderful to have you here. Yeah, I just want to say I think it's absolutely disgusting that they would air something like that tonight. <laughs> there, there's no business. No one has any business showing a Chris Jericho match at all. That's all, that's all I'm going to say about the match. Yeah. Yeah, we, we saw the verbal confrontation. Yep. Uh, we saw him very, it's clearly a situation where an older gentleman is jealous of, of a younger athlete's hair. Yep. It's true. And what, what is, what does it lead to? What does yep. it lead to? Yep. Well, I, uh, man, how do I even start this? So at the beginning of our WrestleMania review, I said, yep, there's probably going to be some news breaking shortly. If what I'm hearing is true. And I was, the way I told Jimmy is I felt like I was trying to keep a criminal on the line through that show. I was just stretching the show until this announcement happened. Cause when I was told about it, I couldn't believe that it was actually happening. I, I, I'm having trouble believing it even now myself. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And again, we're going to talk about this video throughout the show. It won't be like a one thing. This is going to be what you guys are, are, are going to want to talk about. Have I gotten any sleep since Mania yet? I've gotten no more than five and a half hours each night since then. Normal night, SRS victory lap as usual. Listen, we were told the footage was going to air. The footage aired. FightfulSelect.com. Big thumbs up. Adrian Wells, uh, if you send a chat in and you want like want to comment, Luis will find it for us, our great moderator, who I want to shout out right now because he's done an incredible job all week helping me out. Not only that, he showed up last Wednesday uh, when I didn't realize how badly we were going to need him and helped out a ton as well. So I want to thank him so much for that. Uh, I am enacting slow mode on this bad boy. Mm. Please leave a thumbs up as we do it. Heartless says, so what do you guys want to talk about? Well, let's talk about what set it up. Mm -hmm. Saturday, it was revealed that the Young Bucks would show all in footage. So this naturally, I... I what the hell is this about? Is this that? And I'm immediately right. told, yes, it is that. It is the CM Punk Jack Perry footage. Now there was a whole lot. Of, there were a whole lot of people saying, and it's going to be a swerve. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. Well, the very fact that the Young Bucks were presenting it led me to believe that some sort of angle would be worked yeah. out of it. And immediately in our report, we had asked, well, how did Dax and Cash feel about it? And I was told it was run by them. And then even before that, I was told there's no way they wouldn't run that by them because Tony right. Khan respects the two of them too much to, to put that on there. I've since found out that they were just basically like, let's make some money. Let's generate some buzz. Let, let's do the damn thing. And like, even up until they aired it, I was like, is it going to happen? Is it really going to happen? Yeah. Now I, I saw a lot of faux outrage. I could definitely see a lot of people that are like, well, why air it? I'm completely a, a understanding of that belief that there's, there are a whole lot of 
you wouldn't have survived the attitude era people that were like up in arms and like acting like this was a business killer. I'm like, man, even after seeing this, I'm like, I, it's neutral to me. Like, I'm just like, it, it happened. It was a thing. It existed, but they aired it and they aired it with a countdown, which was a, a playful jab at their friend, Cody Rhodes for the right. Cody countdown that happened. Yes. And yeah, that's what that was. And, that is very clearly a friendly jab. They are still uh, friends, to the best of my knowledge. But I want to know how you felt leading up to it, Alex. When I first heard that it was happening, I I, I didn't believe it. I, I I mean, they're doing it. I mean, I didn't think they were gonna. I didn't think they were gonna troll. Like people were like, "Oh, it's, it's a troll. They're gonna show backstage footage, but it's gonna be something else." Now, I knew they were going to do it, but I was like, I don't know why you're doing it. Like, I mean, to me, I thought all the stuff that Punk said on, on the in the Helwani interview, this has to be incontrovertible, conclusive evidence on camera that refutes everything he said in that video, or why do it? You know what I mean? Like, but what you, it seems to me that you're upset that he came out and gave his his account of things, his side of things, and you say, but that's not what happened. We have the video here that proves that's not what happened. You know what? I'm sick of this guy running his mouth in a Helwani interview. I'm going to show it. We're going to show it. Whatever, whoever it was that made the ultimate decision, had the idea to do or whatever. And then I watched the video tonight and I'm go. That's basically how I thought it went. I mean, yeah, th there's some there's some quibbles with what he said. Like in my like head, Perry that's... came up that Perry came up to him, and and it, Perry was the aggressor at least verbally. But that's not at all what happened. Jack's just standing there, and he walks up to him and starts everything. And you can tell from Perry's body language, he's just he's having a conversation, and then it gets physical, and then yeah. the thing happens. Everything that I basically thought it was happened. And then yeah, I'm that's like, how, it's oh. how I played it out in my head pretty much right. was how that was. So let's let's walk through it as best I remember it, as best I remember it. And uh, I don't think we're allowed to air the footage of right. it, but uh, I'm going to call it right now as I'm watching it. There you Backstage, go. you see Aubrey, Paul Turner, Jerry Lynn, and there's uh, Jack Perry. CM Punk approaches Jack Perry. Jack flips his hair back. There is a person with a headset walking up and kind of monitoring those two that very clearly sees that there's something afoot. Right. Samoa Joe is uh, off to the left preparing for his match. Perry flips his hair again. Uh, there's somebody walking around in the background by Gorilla. They're next to the monitors and all that. Punk motions his arm. Jack Perry shaking his head. There's no audio to this, by the way. Right. Jack Perry flips his hair once again and gets pushed mid hair flip, pushed again. And, or, or, you know, we don't know if it's a push, a punch, whatever it is. CM Punk tries to grab Jack Perry in for a bit of a choke. And Paul Turner and uh, Samoa Joe are pulling at Jack Perry to get him away. Jerry Lynn is pulling at CM Punk. Chris Hero walks over, pushes uh, CM Punk back along with jerry lynn as this is happening hook and samoa joe paul turner are bringing a, a very angry jack perry who is needing to be restrained at this point like and he's trying to like break out of samoa joe and it, it ain't happening right um cm punk this is what we assume was tony khan fearing for his life it you can very clearly see punk needing to be restrained as he's pushing like looking like he's going over the gorilla area area pointing at Tony Khan. Uh, I, and Malachi black approaches probably to defuse the situation. Uh, he walks away with punk. Jack Perry is still being held by Samoa Joe. Sanjay Dutt has now walked over as well. And Chris hero walks away. Chris, Chris hero. Chris hero is me in that situation. Chris Hero, Chris Hero knew is this exactly shit was I going like, down. Oh, Jesus, guys, what are we doing? We got to, can we not just do this now? Like he was yes. he Chris Hero is exactly how I would have reacted in that situation. Um, yes. 
And I, so what this yeah. what this establishes to me, Punk stands on his business. He he brings it to somebody if he's got an issue. Period. Physically, Punk is the aggressor. We don't know what was said. Now right. there there's a chance that that um and somebody says clearly a push, not a punch. No need to say you're not sure. Uh, there, there are two of those, friend. So, yes, I can fucking say that I'm not sure when I'm not sure. Right. You don't get to decide that I'm sure. But um, we we don't have the audio. Now, there's a chance that Jack Perry in the future comes along and says, yeah, everything that he said about that is uh, is accurate. Like, like that is, that's true. Uh, there were also some blurred figures. I don't know who those were. But Punk is the physical aggressor. Um, as, as I look at it, like immediately it is broken up and I mean, right. immediately broken up, Yeah, like within three seconds, they're doing that. And, and hero had to come around, uh, from the gorilla side of things. Punk, very clearly angry. Jack Perry gets angry. And again, we, uh, it's going to all be. He said, she said, or not even going to be, he said, she said, it's going to be, he said about what was said. Right. Now there's a lot of people that I think were dismissing the Tony Con like this, like this shit. Tony Khan is so soft. Tony feared for his life over this. Tony Khan is not a fucking pro wrestler guys. No, Tony Khan is not a wrestler. No. So I, yeah, I can't sit there and say that he was justified or not justified. I'm not, I wasn't in his shoes. Right. I, I wasn't, you know, would I have personally been? I can't say that I feel like I would have been. However, to say that he should, could, or or anything, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Um, it, what this showed me was that Punk, listen, at this point, this this is these incidents had happened twice. Punk didn't want to be there. Punk didn't want no, to be there. What I have learned since then is that in between the time that Punk said, you need to take care of this, and that happened, Perry had been instructed, or somebody had been contacted to instruct Perry that he needed to go. Yeah, and I don't know that that message had been relayed by then because it happened within a matter of minutes. But um, I just, I look at this and I'm like, this happened pretty well how I imagined it was had happened. And... I don't really think that, yeah. Uh, Vince from D wouldn't have been Vince was on fucking steroids half his life. What, what are like, we talking what, about here? What the hell? Like, I, I mean, I don't even know, man. Like, and, and listen, I, I saw, hold on, listen, I saw, listen, I saw, I, I, there's just some real ignorant shit being said. Never been around a dust up in his sheltered life. The man owns fucking soccer teams and football teams. What are you, what are y'all talking about? You're right because My because God. most most promoters are are in bar brawls every every week yes. every week of their life. It's this is just dumb. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Sense, guys. I'm, I'm not I'm not Tony Khan. It's not for me to say how he felt in the moment. I saw. CM Punk being restrained by two grown men pulling them behind him to put a finger in his face and scream at him about something over over a desk. I mean, in the sure. moment, I don't know how afraid I would have been, but I certainly would have found it a little odd that this guy who was my employee is threatening me. Yeah, there's there's there, there's a lot to there's a lot to look at there. It is a shame that it is a non uh, audio security camera feed but i thought i never expected audio from a camera like that yeah yeah and so but it's it's a, it's a shame we don't get to hear what is being screamed at that point but okay yeah i, I, I just want to address this too y'all on the take just so you can get in the scrum uh i just want to say Jesus. i just want to say sincerely i want to look at you in your eye and say you're a fucking moron <laughs> i don't go to those anymore. I don't like sitting in a room after watching a five hour show for another two hours anymore. There is no amount of money that WWE or AEW could pay me to want to go to that anymore. Anyway, we've got a ton of super chats and humper chats about it. My thing is just like, ah, 
I don't particularly <clears throat> think that it helped hurt anybody. And I see people saying Punk's trending. It backfired. Well, at what point did you think that CM Punk was not going to trend over this? Right. That, no, that was I, the I, yeah. That's the this is the that's that was why very, I that's why my initial reaction was I don't know why we're gonna we're, we're airing it because I don't I don't feel like it's yeah. it's not gonna have if if you are somebody who's pro AEW then I don't think this makes you anti AEW and if you're sure. certainly if you're anti AEW this is not going to change your mind and making the you know what actually I was wrong about Tony Khan. No, no one's going to do that. This is just going to further entrench people in their tribalism, which has already gotten out of hand. And I, that's my least favorite part of doing this job is the tribalism. Yeah. And it's and but, it, oh, this, this decision to show this only makes that worse. And that's why I didn't want to see it. I didn't want them to do it. So, yeah. And I, I completely get it to me. It's just so neutral, so neutral. In this, I'm just like, eh. We got Pat saying, best part is Hook vibing. <laughs> that is... The, he Listen, is, if you're Hook, you're a smart guy because you saw that anybody mm -hmm. that that physically makes contact, that you right. might get suspended. So, and, and that had been established. Dante says you shouldn't put hands on a co-worker. Again, I, I don't know what was said. But I don't know. What I mean, there, there's either, always but... the possibility that something was said that could have, right. have led to that. Now, there are some other elements of this that are kind of important. The Young Bucks presented this. And listen, yeah. I, I don't care if you like them or not. This was objectively hilarious mm -hmm. that they said that the <laughs> that the scapegoat Jack Perry was involved and that he was a nice young man from California. Yes. And that the other gentleman uh, involved in the scuffle is friends with FTR. And that they believe that FTR masterminded this mm -hmm. so they would not have ample time to hydrate and pray on their match yes. later in yes. the evening. That's right. Now, listen, I mean this sincerely. If you are telling me that isn't hilarious, you are a hater. That is the most hilarious possible excuse that I have ever heard. Right. Um, and that is honestly better than I could have imagined because I was like, how are they going to even make sense of this? And people are like, oh, well, they baby faced so and so. Well, listen to a lot of people, Punk is already baby faced from this. So you might as well baby face right. the baby faces in this FTR. Yeah. And that's what FTR rolled out and they're like, why? Why did you all run this? They were the <laughs> they were yes. the voice of reason yes. here. Yes, They're they like, were. Why did you air this? We're having a match. Who gives a shit? I'm tired yeah. of talking about this. Yeah, they were everybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was. I mean, I think that what the Buck said was hilarious, and what FTR said pretty much echoed the sentiment of an awful lot of people on the internet that go. There was no point in this. This was a waste of time. This was a ratings ploy. This wasn't necessary. Uh, I thought it was a fine way to weave it into the story, and I'll think that it was. Uh, I'll think it's even better if they somehow get Jack Perry in, yeah, no, and yeah. get him. I mean, somehow he's under fucking contract. Yeah. They should get him in, yeah. but get him over. Yeah. As a result of this, whether oh. that happens, I don't know. Whether he's got the chops to do it, I don't know. But we'll find out. Jack Perry is wrestling in Chicago on Friday. Like he's, he's, he's going to get the heat certainly in the next match. Um, so uh, I, I, I think it's, I would think it would be a really, really smart idea to, to use this as the impetus for him uh, coming in and joining the elite, maybe with a little makeover um, and, um, and maybe, maybe even, you know, costing FTR the match, helping the Young Bucks or whatever to to, to cement that. There, there's there's a lot of stuff they could do here. Um, it did feel like rather than, oh, I know what we'll do to build this match. We'll show the footage from All In. It looked like we're showing the footage from All In. How do we use that so it doesn't look like we're just showing the footage from All In and for no reason? It's very clearly what they were doing was just yes. showing it to be. Sh they, they didn't like the aerial interview. They didn't yeah. like the shots that was taken at them. 
Yeah. And like, listen, I don't care about the shots that people take right. at each other. I didn't have a problem with Osprey's line. Didn't have a problem with any of that stuff. Didn't have a problem with the WWE stuff. But I mean, AEW has taken shots at WWE many times. WWE took yeah. several last week. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that stuff. I don't. I just don't, man. Don't. Yeah. Um, M Hart says, looks like AWWB is using copyright to have videos pulled from Twitter. That's an even worse look right now, isn't it? Uh, no, they want the viewership on their television right. show off yeah. of it. They yeah. want the DV. What? Y'all can't sit here and say, get your numbers up, then get mad when they're getting their numbers up. Right. Yeah. Uh, S <laughs> Shelf President says, sorry, SRS, your chat is full of tough guys tonight. The basement boys are flexing flab. Uh, I mean, their jaw it served their purpose. It was very wrestling, man. I, I used to watch WWE when they ran billionaire Ted skits. And when yeah, they right. had a pre-taped segment right. of Jim Cornette talking about what happened on WCW. Uh, I, I, it, it just does not bother me. It doesn't bother me. Was it just an excuse to air this? Yeah, absolutely. It was. Yes. It was a ratings ploy. Duh. That's, that's yeah. why they did this. Elizabeth Kaplan says a lot of people mad that Punk did what he did, but already got fired for it. The consequence of his actions, no need to relitigate. That's the thing. He moved on. He's very happy now by the by the sounds of it. I'm happy for him, and I hope that nothing like this ever happens with him again. I I I saw somebody say, and I and I I think I agree that this would have actually felt certainly more relevant, and also like it maybe needed to be done around the time when you fired him. Yes. For full disclosure, this is what he did. He's he's been warned about backstage shenanigans before. There was a zero tolerance policy. He obviously broke it. And then we, you show it to us and then that's it. Around the time when you fire him. And then you have all the context everyone does. And not 8 months later. Now, what when we fire him, here's what happened for for full transparency. And then it doesn't feel like we're, we're just doing this to do it, to get back at him for, we think, exaggerating during the interview or to get a ratings ploy. You sure. do it because it's relevant at the time. Yeah. We're going to pepper in some actual things from the show. Sounds good. Here and there. C. Delgado says they worked it in the story. To me, that's fine. Yeah. Dungeon Master of Puppets says, I can't believe FTR got their friend to attack J Jack Perry to distract the Bucks. Shameful. It's very interesting. Yeah, it was. Blake says, LMAO, Punk was the most over person tonight. Got CM Punk chance in the arena and everything. Also, I think it's funny, Hunter is in Will's head. I mean, there were also some CM Punk chants that were booed down as well. So, I mean, like, it probably should represent it a little bit more fairly in, in that sense. But uh, Yao Bling says, the footage and the FTR promo after got me hyped for that match. Dax's promo made me want to run through the wall. Great work. I mean, if there's one thing Dax Harwood will do, it'll make you want to run through a wall, man. That guy will get you fired up. Yeah. Absolutely get you fired up. Now, Scott Lopez says, CM Punk didn't look good in the footy. Glad they turned it into an angle with FTR. Extra point for Will Ospreay's jab at Triple H. All fair in war, bruv. Yeah, no problem with, with that either. After, uh, we'll talk about that as, yeah. as, they, as, they, as we get there, right. so to speak. Uh, Tony says, do the damn match and be done with it. FTR and B Buck should cook and then call it a day. Everyone needs to move on. I agree. Um, to me, this, I was like, why are they doing it? Am I interested in seeing it? Hell yeah, I'm interested in seeing it. Now yeah. I'm like, okay, they really need to never relitigate this again. In fact, I would let Drew McIntyre have the final word on all this <laughs> and just let him do that. In fact, before this show, he said, Time for some tape study. See where his weaknesses are. Uh, just fantastic, that guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. GT Gear says there were thank you, Jack Chance, as well. Chris B. Cream says it's a 4D chess storyline. We'll see how it goes. I ain't giving him that much credit. This was an excuse to run the footage. That's yeah. what that was. Do I like the line that the Young Bucks, um, the Young Bucks gave on that? And do I like the promo FTR did? Hell yeah, I do. Really, really like that. But, uh, you know, if you want to watch uh, this upcoming, upcoming AEW Dynasty pay-per-view, you want to pay a little less for it? We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you.
There is no product that we have promoted more on Fightful that I use while I'm awake than NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You guys have probably seen me anchored to my desk an awful lot for quite a while, and I've always got NordVPN on all my devices. That's because that's what NordVPN.com slash Fightful allows. You get the fastest VPN in the world on all your devices, on all your operating systems. It is so beneficial to have that versatility. Here at home, I put it on my router just in case, and I put it on my phone, laptop, desktop, PC, and smart TV. That allows you to get all the benefits. The online threat protection, the ability to change your virtual location with just one click, the ability to use that NordPass password manager, the file encryption tool, all that good stuff on everything. Also, you can subscribe to all those overseas services I'm telling you all about, all with 24 seven tech support and a 30 day money back guarantee on top of an already amazing deal. Protect yourself on all your devices with nordvpn.com slash Fightful. Uh, guys, just so you know, anybody that sends a super chat or humper chat, they are getting read on the air. We just don't do them in order. Our moderators are working hard to organize them, but we're going to go back and forth to this throughout the evening because this is what you guys want to talk about. Uh, Glassdoor Gamer says, I love the show minus Jericho. Yeah, I could imagine at least one other person on our panel that would probably think that way. Adrian says, just showing love. Just Mass just wants to support us. And then a lot of love for our moderators. Uh, Izzy talking about Luis working hard. Jamal saying that Zach is in his prayers. Tom LaValle, Josh Mansfield sending love as well. Van Twiblade wants to know who's the cuter mod, Zach or Luis. Uh, they're both cute in their own ways. Mm -hmm. um, Zach, cute in the way that he supports us. Luis, uh, in the way that he keeps us sane and makes my job a lot yeah. easier. Big yeah. thank you there. Meet Norma says, PSA for meat. Enjoy wrestling. Don't be weird. It ain't that serious. Touch some grass or, by God, consensually touch a butt. Back to my meat partners. Damn. Parker Hines says, am I living in a simulation? Wrestling is crazy. So, let's talk a little bit about the show, and then we're going right. to go right back to this because it's, sure. again, we're, yeah. we are a super chat and humper chat driven show. If you we want are. your question read right on the air, youtube.com slash Fightful. Uh, donate a super chat, or if you're watching on X on Twitch or something like that, Humper Chats. That is H U M P E R chats.com. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Joe gets attacked by Swerve immediately. I love this angle. We will go back to it, uh, towards the main event, but this was good, especially after what we saw last week. I, man, I, Swerve has like, you know, the, it, it, there was no reason to keep him out of things in the main event without him doing this. Of course, he's going to be going after Joe immediately. Yeah. Uh, I like starting it with, you know, the, the eliminator, presumably the idea was to start the, the show with Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes. And the uh, main event was going to be the TNT title match. And I, I liked that They were like, Oh, we got to pivot. Uh, put the TNT title match on. Now, if Joe is cleared, we'll do the match at the main event. I like that. They're kind of like just flipped everything. Um, I, I like the attack from Swerve, putting him through the table in that way was good. Um, everybody like getting Swerve out of there. Samoa Joe's got to go back to medical. All that stuff was a cool way to, to heat up, you know, the show. What There's a lot of cool stuff, honestly, that happened on this show that people aren't going to pay any attention to. But I like that they really furthered this it's on site angle with um love. swerve and samoa joe you know me i'm always here for a peter griffin versus the chicken feud i love that stuff that's that's it's my jam orange cassidy in action on rampage we get a trent video package i wasn't here to talk about this last week but i love that angle too i love that trent made that turn i know they think a lot of him i'm excited for that match holy shit did adam copeland and penta cook my god yeah this Great. match that i ever considered in my life and me and you are big Lucha Underground guys. Buddy, back when Lucha Underground was on, if they would have put Penta face to face with Brock Lesnar, I'd have been like, I'd buy it. I'd buy Penta. Maybe 120 pounds <laughs> lighter, breaking Brock's arm. <laughs> well, they pushed him back then. They, and like, they, man, that it, it was move a, in this match made me be like, hell yeah, because we didn't think we would ever see Edge again when that was no, happening. No, just the idea of uh, it, it, honestly, 20, in 2014. When Penta was just taking arms, 
Um, if you had said in 10 years, you'll be watching this guy versus edge on a company that doesn't exist and won't yeah. exist for another five years. Just imagine that that, that is a it's, it's a it's an objectively cool thing. And somehow Pinto will have gotten out of his Lucha Underground contract that was like 73 years. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. They just never did their last season to keep everybody under contract. It was insane. This is fun. This this, this was a really fun time watching this match. Um, It does really feel like Adam Copeland um, is is having a blast, like he said last week uh, in his promo. Um, and get, just getting a chance to wrestle all these guys, you know, like th- these are uh, pro- professional wrestlers are professional wrestling fans. Yeah. So, like I'm, I'm pretty sure in 2014, 2015, somebody sent him video of this little ninja skeleton <laughs> taking people's arms in this weird shaped warehouse. And it was like, that guy's good. Ah, I wish I could wrestle him one day. And now he gets to, that's kind of cool thing, you know? Matty Nice says, or am I going to cop Penta's UK blue mask? No, no, but I did uh, love, I love the blue getup. I did. That was cool stuff. No, WDB camera angles and Pat's commentary gimmick made a debut, like a literal copy and paste. Nope. Mike Mansuri has been instituting a whole lot of those for uh, quite some time, friend. I mean, I know they're easier to notice now, but right. I mean, we, we've also seen Renee doing the, the Megan Olivi UFC style stuff as well. I right. see a lot more borrowed from UFC than I do from WWE. Uh, Brody and Julia attack Copeland. Willow makes the save. And uh, we get a bit of a tag set up in a promo backstage. Mm-hmm. The highlight of this to me was when Willow went up to Copeland. And then Stokely challenges Copeland on Willow's behalf for the TNT title. And then she's like, no, no, no. What's going on here? Um, <laughs> but then Copeland just... I don't know if he was tired, but he just repeated the same thing. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So he's like, how, how about a little tag match next week? She says, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this? <laughs> like, it did feel like it was a little bit of mansplaining there. Like, it was just like, no, you've got, yeah, I have ideas. You know what I mean? It did feel like a little bit of the boss talking over uh, the woman in the, in the, in the boardroom, oh. but this, this was a lot of fun. I, I, I liked the backstage thing. I liked that, that Mark beat, Eddie Kingston to death while well, he got beaten to death, <laughs> took his title and their best friends. That's, that's a little cool gimmick too. And it, the, the sixth man will be fun. A dynasty. Do I wish it was Malachi versus uh Copeland one-on-one? Yes, I do. But the, the three of the, the six fans will be fun too. A guys reminder, please leave a thumbs up on this video. Have some mercy on Kyler. Who's going to be going through these comments tomorrow afternoon. Unfortunate news, Akibono passed away. Yeah. Uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling star. He also competed against uh against Big Show at WrestleMania. Want to send our love to his his friends, his family, his fans. Uh he was a very prolific sumo wrestler. And uh just I mean, one of the greatest of all time. And you, you hate to see that. I believe he was only 54 years old. Uh yeah. tragic and and just want to send our love. Just want to send our love. Nicholas says, not related to AEW, but any idea where the WWE WrestleMania drop doc hasn't dropped? Uh, I'm I'll send a, a thing. I honestly, as as the day wore on, I was like, are they going to time this to drop it during the footage? I thought that's what they were doing, but it still hasn't dropped yet, and that's weird. Yeah, yeah. Somebody says, "R.I.P. Ky- Kyler isn't dead, guys. He's not <laughs> dead. No, he- <laughs> no. no, he's very R.I.P. much alive." Him. R.I.P. him for having to go through these comments tomorrow. I think is yeah, what for having to go through. The, no. Yeah, because that's part of his job is every morning yes. he'll go through yes. the the, mm-hmm. the night priors and make sure there aren't any pieces of trash. Yeah. Ricardo says the opinions in here are all over the place. That's what I like to see. That's what I want. You're going to have a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Dumbasses on the Internet clip little 10 second clips of things that I say, even though I'll say something. I mean, listen, I could not be more neutral in this situation. Punk was the aggressor. Don't know what Jack Perry said. I see why Tony could have felt threatened in that. Right. Personally, I wouldn't, but hey, I ain't fucking, I ain't Tony. So right. how the hell can I, you know, uh, I see why they let him go. Punk is in a place where he's happy about now. Yeah. I wish that Jack Perry will, I hope he gets over big because of this as a result. And I hope Drew McIntyre, has a banger of a line mm-hmm. off of this as well. Yeah, me too. 
Drew is about to have a field day, says Just Marquise. I am Jeremiah Lasky, says, remember when Punk was just never returning to wrestling? Now he's been on both companies in the same week. Man, still making still making news there. Um, got, hey, here, here's an easy plug for you guys. Go to our YouTube and type in Timeline CM Punk, and I will give you about an hour of how this actually all started at Royal Rumble 2014, and it has just never stopped since then. Right. Out of all this, Alex, the thing that, to me, there were a couple things that were said last week that I, one, was disheartened about, and two, I was like, okay, glad he sees that. I was disheartened to learn that Colt Cabana had actually approached CM Punk and he was like, let's squash it. Let's just fix this shit before it gets awkward. And Punk didn't want any part of that. He said, talk to my lawyer. I don't know if Cabana ever did, but there was an attempt made. However, one of the things that Punk said that I was like, I was like, you know, it, it's, it's good that he sees that. He's like, you know, maybe we were in different businesses. I want to fill up arenas and do this and that. And they want five-star matches. And that's the business that they're in. Well, the business that they're in is going to get them a sizable TV deal pretty soon. And he was like, you know what? Maybe maybe things would have went better if I would have realized that sooner. Mm -hmm. I thought that showed a little bit of growth. Um, but yeah. And again, my God, guys, you cannot be this fucking obtuse. You honestly can't tell if that's a push or a punch. Yes, of course the first one is a push. Don't be a fucking moron. Look at when they separate. I beg of you, please. Use your head, use your eyes. No, I can't tell what that was. Oh, my God. I'm expecting Jack Perry interference at Dynasty. That's how it should be. That is absolutely how it should be. Uh, Young Buck should show up in Chicago on Friday with Jack. Ooh. Ooh. Um. Yeah, man. That'd be, I mean, they're going to get, they're going to get some heat yeah, next time I they mean, go to Chicago big time. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it might be fun just like see them up in a, in a booth somewhere munching on popcorn for, for Jack's big match. You know, they should do the thing where like they, they walk in with the tickets and popcorn yeah. and nachos to sit front row for Jack's match. Maybe that, maybe that could be like help to get a little more heat on Jack as well. RGA said, I see Punk's recent IG story. The mission accomplished, I did. I mean, that's, you know, sure. That's pretty tepid, pretty tame, yeah. I think. Mm. Um, Adam says, made Punk look like a chav, but I'm probably biased. I don't understand the terminology. Feels like shots from both sides will be normal now. Yes, it is. And you should yeah. probably expect it, get over it, and deal with it. Yeah. Not let it ruin your day. Tyler says at the end of the day, Punk was wrong. TK is like 130 pounds and not a fighter wrestler. People clowning TK in here are either Punk stands or haters, they say. JDB Pringle says the comments are so funny. Tribalism at its finest. A thirst trap for meatheads. Thanks for doing the hard work, even when it's dumb. Let me tell you, it's been plenty of dumb. Mm -hmm. How was how telling was Shivani's reaction? It was funny. It was very funny. Uh, I, I, I did find that very entertaining. William Tucker says it's bringing out the worst in people. AEW used it for ratings. Drew will use it for WWE. Thank you for the great content this week. That's how I feel. It is such a, it's just such a non thing. I'm like, okay, it happened pretty well how I thought. I, I understood why each person was bothered in the situation. Yeah. We're here talking about it. You know, we're, we're blessed to be here talking about it. And that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Jay Fabe says Chris Hero saved Punk's career. Punk saw red after the scrap and was ready to put hands on TK. That could very well be true. I I, I will say that Punk, I thought, was his his saying of, you know, he would just say, hi, hi, Tony, how you doing? If he saw him, kind of showed how he feels about Tony. Yeah. True winner in all this is Drew. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Uh, Andre's Gaming says CM Punk hot first. Corey says, why was Jack suspended again? He wasn't the aggressor. I mean, listen. I could understand Tony also not being too thrilled that objectively a top draw in his company. Right. Sure. Was, was in that situation. And ah, 
I, the, it's tough the, to say without hearing, and I'm sure Tony heard a lot of what happened. Right. I don't know. There, there was obviously a, a conversation happening, and then Punk lashes out with a push. I'm assuming it wasn't just Punk out of nowhere doing it, that Perry said something he didn't like specifically before that. I don't know what it was. So I, I think that, and then after that, like Perry's just defending himself, and he's pissed that a guy attacked him backstage. You know, just for for something he said. So, um, I would assume that he had been talked to about uh, management and 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 something like the Crimea River thing into the camera was something that was frowned upon. Yeah, so, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Like that. I I don't. I I see why he was suspended. Why he was sent home. It's weird to me that it would lead to him not being on AEW TV for this long. But it feels yes. like. That is coming to a close with a good storyline to bring him back in. That's that being said, there there are an awful lot of absences from AEW TV that should not be nearly as long as they are yes, in general. True. Yeah. And you know what? I One thing I'm seeing is that everybody in this chat's trying to act hard. I'm going to make sure you get hard. We need to talk about your mailman. Doesn't need to know your business. Doesn't need to know you're looking to have better sex. Fortunately, Blue Chew is here. It arrives in a discreet package. But let, let's get back to the start. Maybe you want that performance, that, that edge in bed. Blue Chew has you covered. So, here's the deal. You take their online consultation, and if approved, you get a chewable with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis for a fraction of the price. Not just that, no awkward doctor's visits in person, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Prescribed online, shipped straight to your door, but... Mailman's not going to know what's in that package, but somebody's going to know what your package is bringing. Maybe it is the mailman or mailwoman. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they want you to drop something off by their back door. Well, with Blue Chew, you're going to be able to do that. Use the code FIGHTFUL. BlueChew.com. Van Twimbley says Mark and Eddie are Go Goku and Piccolo. I don't understand that reference either. Ricardo says is he's staying off Dragon of Ball, X. Is that from Dragon Ball Z? Is yeah. that a Dragon Ball Z thing? Maybe? Yeah, must know. be. Must be. Not my beat. Heartless says, this is so ridiculous. I'm low-key loving it. I'll gladly pay for an AEW pay-per-view if they leak the all-out footage. I don't think there is all-out footage. That was uh, locker yeah. room stuff. Yeah. Stu says they need to get out of the wrestling mindset and think what would Phil be did be acceptable in a workplace because it's not. Correct. It would not be. Right. Uh, this And this isn't the... Yeah, 80s or 90s anymore. Yeah. Uh, Michael Carson says, let's also not forget, this would not have even come up if Punk or Helwani didn't stop pressing Punk about it. He wanted all this drama to happen again. Listen, man, Helwani had two hours with Punk. I like any good interviewer would have asked him about this. Like, what are we right. like? Listen, sure. I understand and completely realize that a lot of people look at Helwani and they say, in on the WWE thing because. He had an angle right afterwards. He does work alongside them. I completely get it. But also, any good interviewer would have asked about it. So I'm not going to fault him for that at all. Jam Beard says, I can already tell there's going to be a Raw segment with Punk and Drew getting into a fight in Gorilla during one of those camera walkout spots. I kind of hope so. I mean, that I would like. I would like a little like parody sure. of that. Yeah. Ron says, I don't know how the laws work in London, but in America, that's called assault. But the segment did play well into the FTR storyline. Yeah, they they considered it an open and shut case mm -hmm. if they they pretty well wanted it. Uh, Jonathan Smith says, did CM Punk say he confronted Jack Perry or Jack Perry confronted him? From the interview, I think Punk was truthful in my opinion. The only thing that we don't know is what was said because there was no audio. Thank you all for what you do. I believe Punk said that, that like, I, I can't remember if he said that he walked up to Perry or not. I thought but, I, I maybe I maybe I'm misremembering. I thought he said that Perry came up to him because that didn't happen. That no, absolutely not, did not. That happen. that did not. If that is what he said, that is absolutely not what happened in the video. Yeah, Mister Easley said uh, Shivani looked like he wanted no part of it, and Spencer said the fact that Punk got fired for that. I mean, listen, you you cannot do that. You just can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that. Uh, he said he walked up to Perry. I just listened okay. to it again. Okay, there we go. There you said go. that Punk or Perry invaded his personal space. So for, for those of you who don't know, what he was referencing, the Chael Sonnen Vanderlei Silva thing from the Ultimate Fighter years ago, 
it was Chael Sonnen as Vanderlei Silva, who, listen, is a very imposing and fella, was getting in his space, and he kind of pushed him back to make sure that didn't happen. And with Chael, it was pretty wise. So, yeah, uh, Punk said that he walked up to Perry, but Punk also implied that Perry got, I guess, within his personal space. And and I could kind of see that as as I'm watching this, but I mean they were both kind of hovering around in in that area. There you go. Terminal says, "Let me clarify in show, not interviews." I don't know what this is about. I'll, I'll add that together later. Let's talk about a little bit of the show as well. Hook Shibata Jericho segment. Jericho wants Hook to follow his lead. Shibata likes not Renee's not only, necklace, but but Shibata must kneel at the learning tree of of Chris Jericho. Yes, they, they they're make they're making this very obvious that they do want everyone to hate Chris Jericho. Good because yes. they should, but um, but it is kind of being v- very much a like big point at Jericho heel turn incoming here kind of thing, which is which is fine. It's good. I don't want him to he and Hook to hold the tag titles or something, but. Um, I did that find that was very, very funny that he's like, Shibata must learn uh, under the tree of Chris Jericho. Like, uh, Shibata, I think, knows what he's doing. So, um, what do we got here? Oh, yeah, yeah. What I don't like, Shibata losing. But what I do like, do like, um, hold on. Big Snuggle sent money to say there's video of the interview over the fight. Every word Punk said was true. SRS is getting paid by someone. Yeah, you, you dumbass. Yeah, Enjoy. He's getting, paid, he's getting paid by you $5. <laughs> Thank you for that. Anyway, uh, get, how would that even make sense? I don't know. That you're you're being paid by Tony Khan to like run interference and be like be and not not just come out and say it's obvious CM Punk was telling the truth. Tony Khan in the mud. AEW over. I don't like. Anyway, what I do like is Lee Moriarty getting a pin. Shane Taylor Promotions getting a win. Mm-hmm. Yep. All for that. Um, sure, this is fine. I'm glad I got Shane Taylor Promotions a win, especially Anthony Agogo going gone. Um mm-hmm. You'll appreciate that one. I do but like yeah. that one a lot. I like that one. Uh, Okada defeated Cristiano Argenta and accepts Pac's challenge for Dynasty. But then FTR and Pac get laid out by the elite. This was, I think, the right move in, in many ways. First off, Okada's over. They they love right. him there. But right. on a night like this, you want to get some more heat on the Young Bucks. You want it to be almost exclusively like heat on them for this. They baby-faced FTR in this situation. They were making up excuses to why they lost, which obviously were bullshit. And then they come out and attack these guys. All this made sense to me. Right. Uh, I, I, you know, it was like, Pac, I I accept your challenge. And because Pac doesn't want to wait, he comes out to have the fight now. And he gets laid out by the Young Bucks. And FTR comes down to save him. And we're getting a six-man next week, right? Like, we can all kind of see the writing on the wall there. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Okada versus Pac. That's a thing that, again, one of those, one of those little deals when Okada signs, you start naming all these people that he could work with and Pac is on the list, but you kind of forget about him. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh, that's, that's one we're getting first. We're getting that one first. Oh, great. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We got... The Bang Bang Gang promo. Uh, Jay White had been out of the country or, or not able to go to the shows lately because mm-hmm. of visa stuff. Um, glad glad to see him back, but man, I I just wish that they were doing something more substantial with him from a singles capacity. Yeah, yeah, that's what I that's what I'm wishing. Yeah, yes, I I, I the the thing they did with him in a singles capacity last week was have Billy Gunn kick his ass all over the ring for five minutes. Yeah. So, you know, like woof. Yeah. Fucking no, woof, woof to that decision. Woof. I didn't get to talk on that. that. What a, what a fucking terrible decision. And I try to not drop the F bombs too much 
trying to clean up my language, but are you, you got to be out of your fucking mind to think that was a good idea. By the way, really good job trying to throw a smoke screen on you obviously being paid by Tony Khan by calling him a moron and saying F and woof about his decision to have was, really good. That was, that's really sly throwing everybody off the scent. S sincerely a horrible decision. You know what? Listen, man, Billy Gunn is a specimen, but like, Bruce Pritchard tells stories on his podcast about 25 years ago he had trouble working singles matches because of asthma. Your boy has asthma. It ain't easy to deal with. No. So here's here's a here's a quick way to just divert from possibly exposing that. Yeah. Don't put him over Jay White. <laughs> no. Here's here's what I thought. They ran an angle where he Jay White broke into his house and he threatened the security of his of his wife. I get it. He'd be pissed. Him attacking Jay White before the match and getting an advantage and beating him up for like two minutes before Jay White being the superior, younger, faster, better technical wrestler will switch it up, gain an advantage, yeah. and pin him later in the match. And that's absolutely not what they did. So... Yeah. D Skills says that AEW anticipate AEW chancy in the arena. I don't know. In So Gray asks if I'm coming up for collision and battle of the belts. I'm not. The Saturday and Sunday will be my first two days off in like three or four weeks now because I had Mania Week and Squared Circle Expo Week. And then when I, before I travel, I try to get plenty of work in before that. So I'm going to stay home, watch UFC 300. Uh, Christopher Hollins is AEW great in ring trash TV, except Osprey. So Osprey cuts a promo. The, the people pretending to have a problem with this were weird to me too. Like I, I didn't get that. Ricardo says the Billy goat rules. That's all. Uh, but Peter says Osprey shot at triple H Trump, this smoking gun of a punk video that just confirmed what we already assumed. Well done, bruv. Jay said, I personally love what Osprey said and don't blame him. Uh, also love the EVP footage in the FTR angle. Great way to utilize the footage, make it into an angle. Wonder how many workplaces would allow Punk did uh, to fly. Love the show, guys. So what Osprey said was in response to Triple H asking about missing out on some free agents. He didn't name Osprey, but come on, it's very clear. Come on, what was going on there? Because hey, according to WWE, they didn't talk to Okada. That's their claim. Now I know that they talked to Will Osprey. Osprey was adamant he did not want to move his family over right. from the UK. He right. said that he didn't, uh, he, he just didn't want that to happen. And there was a comment about, well, we don't want somebody that doesn't want to work our schedule, He's et run, cetera. Running from the grind. Running from the grind. And I sit there and I think, well, they've had all kinds of people that have done that. What are you talking about? Of course, they, they've got plenty yeah. of people that do that. Yeah. And, if Osprey is good being there once a week, well, then you, you would want Will Osprey. And Will said that uh, <laughs> that he grinded that's, on his boss's daughter in order to get where he was. rich coming from a guy who's only in the position that he is because he grinded on the boss's daughter. There you go. Now, I think that there's a possible, uh, it's, it's quite likely that that didn't hurt. <laughs> but also I think that probably wouldn't have gotten everywhere he was by doing that but very clearly no right sure that yeah. is the that is the the joke that he's the son-in-law who's trying to you know like take over the yeah. business from the dead yeah it, we get it i i thought the play on words was very clever which is why it i was. laughed at it it's very good. um uh and i also thought when trips made that comment i was like come on seriously is that what of all people saying? Uh, of all people, Will Ospreay? Yeah. Okay. Guy who, so I, guy who was, I can understand why, if because he says, I asked the boss for five minutes. And I can understand why he, shoot, would go, I need to address this because this really pissed me off. You know, I mean, I can see why he would have said that if he did indeed say that. Yeah, because I mean, like knowing Osprey's history and knowing the schedule that he kept and the links that he went in New Japan and working there during the pandemic, which he has spoken about. I, and I saw somebody say, well, it sounded like he got emotional. I'm like, well, you know, if you had to quarantine for like a week or two at a time after flying, not just a direct flight right over to Japan, but you had to fly around the war zone mm -hmm. as well. Um, and also when he came to AEW, he was adamant to me 
that uh, that he wanted to work a full schedule. Right. Matthew England says, uh, Helwani says AEW is sending out copyright strikes. They've done that for a long time, but mm-hmm. it's very clear they want the viewership on their show. I I'm not surprised by that. Dan Hurley in the tourney says WCW 2000 is trending on X. Uh, it's like number 17 in your in your trends there. Sure, I, I do not see this as a WCW 2000 moment. I just no, I just don't. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I did a, let's see, I did a poll and I said, did this change anybody's mind? And 9.5 said yes. I thought it would be closer to 2 or 3% yes. Right. I didn't think anybody was going to change right. their mind. After seeing this footage whatsoever. In Simmons says, I know Jay White's first choice was WWE, but because of the hiring freeze, AW got him, treat him like the star he is before you lose him. I don't know if that was his first choice. I know that he, there, there was interest and they had talks, but I think whatever the best deal was for him is where he was going to go. Uh, I just don't know that we'll ever know if they could have made the best deal for him because of the unfortunate fact that, Vince forced his way back into the company. So therefore we don't know, but I, I do know one thing. I bet Cody Rhodes 2023 looks a hell of a lot different if switchblade switchblade. Jay white was in WWE. Cause I think he would have been doing something with him throughout the year. Right. And I think Jay white would be a major star in WWE right now. Does punk have a no fights clause in his contract? There is a, a behavioral clause, which is pretty standard. I don't know if there's any like amendments there, hmm. there. However, Michael says, people who love punk feel vindicated. People who hate punk are grasping at straws. AEW did themselves no favor. Osprey was grasping at straws. No, Osprey was not grasping at straws. Mm. Absolutely not. Was AEW? Possibly. But Osprey absolutely was not. I think he had every right to feel that way. Right. Me too. Yeah. Damien says, don't care what side you're on. I thought it was wrong of AEW to show the footage, but I also lost all respect for punk acting how he acted. Both are wrong. You know, I... I don't fault you for feeling that way. Paul Riot Riles says, I didn't punch anybody. Was that not a punch when Joe was pulling Jack away from Punk? I was told by somebody in the comments that that was, it was just, it was 10,000% a push. Yeah. Should Tony Schiavone have gone to Punk for the glass issues with Jack? Seemed like legal or talent relations should have gotten involved, not Punk. Well, I mean, if, if Punk is to be believed, he had a contract as a consultant and was also asked to do that. Right. by some, some people that would probably have a pretty good reason to ask him to do it. And I would imagine the reason they asked him to do it was because he is he is a person with influence in the locker room. I don't think it's that out of, like, I don't find that out of character for people to go, hey, CM Punk, there's a, a very young wrestler who is very adamant in doing this. Will you go have a talk with him? Because it seems like it's not getting through to him. I don't find that out of the, like, crazy at all like of course he would do that he fancies himself as a locker room leader so he would probably em- embrace that type of thing yeah sarah noble says people who say wcw 2000 don't remember that yet yeah, i completely agree yes i completely agree like we're talking ed ferrara with barbecue sauce making fun of jim yeah. ross and all the the stuff they put medusa through like come on man like ridiculous stuff it's BB says, does the fear for the life show Tony's privilege? That's why his normal audience won't understand. There's an awful lot of things that I can't connect with Tony Khan over. Listen, that might be one of them, but I'm not going to sit there and fault him for that situation. Maybe it was hyperbole. Eh. Yeah. I, you know, it's. Yeah, I, I just I'm not one to say how he felt. Even CM Punk said he's not one to say how he felt. He just doesn't right. see what would have caused that. Right. Chris Hart says, base Sean, take the fact that it's a storyline. Is it like fine? Doesn't really matter what Punk's take is. I'm glad they at least tried to work it into a storyline, but it's very clear that it was just a crutch. It was an excuse, mm-hmm. Alex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I fully agree. Corey says, I was a huge WCW fan growing up. This is nowhere near that. <laughs> mm. Well, um, Michael says the only issue I had tonight was an Osprey using an overused insult that's been over said over 800 times before. Minor, minor complaint, I know. Yeah, I think he only said it because, as Alex said, it worked with... It's the turn of phrase, you it's know. It's the turn of phrase. Yeah, right. I think that's it. 
Michael says, Hunter's comment sounded very salty. Like they didn't break up with me. I broke up with him. Yeah, it did. It did. And well, the idea uh, of like, like I, I asked this girl to prom and she said, she, she said, no, well, I, I didn't even want to go with her. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but you, I, the idea that like Will Ospreay says yes, but no, 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 actually we don't even want you if you want any time off to be with your family in England. You could stay over there. I don't. I feel like that's not true. And I, I just that one was a little more personal. Like of all the things that were said, that's one where I was like, mm, he was pretty clear that he didn't want to like uproot right. his family. And yeah. I, you know what? I respect that. That's the yeah. one. Like I didn't mind the Pat McAfee comment or any of that, or because most of that stuff, I just don't give a shit. Like it's right. again for all the. You guys wouldn't have survived the Attitude Era. Man, there were all kinds of shit in the Attitude Era that were yeah. it was way more obnoxious than anything that we're seeing. Yeah. Including yeah. the video tonight that served no purpose uh whatsoever. They could have literally just mentioned it and without showing the footage. That's why I'm like, okay, it was very clearly a ratings ploy and all that. But hey, that's what they're in the business of doing is popping ratings. Sure. And if a sure. couple people stick around, whatever. Now, if they somehow drop tons of viewers as a result of this well then yeah that's obviously bad but i just don't see that happening either i'm trying to remember uh, was the jericho match immediately following this because if so they did <laughs> drop a lot of viewers let me tell you he's not gonna like those quarterlies <laughs> he ain't gonna like he ain't gonna like the brandon thurston <laughs> breakdowns of those <laughs> the demo god um, may, may not be exactly what he thinks oh uh, Tony Storm went to toast under Rosa, but then just beat her ass. Uh, we got her. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> <coughs> we got Dela Common uh, talking about the match on Collision. Says this should absolutely rule. Going to let chat finish their obsession. Yeah, it should rule. Uh, the fastest wrestler alive. But then Mariah May uh, defeated Anna Jay and Mina Shirakawa appears. She didn't get much of a reaction, but Mariah May gets the win. Uh, Shadester says, you mean there was something more, uh, talk worthy on the show than the continuation of the love triangle that Mariah is now in with Tony and Mina. Listen, it, uh, <laughs> there might be some attitude era fans that are, that are also very partial to this segment as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're a little, little bit of H L A. Yeah, indeed. Um, I, I thought that the, 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 the champagne toast it, from the get, just not being what that is. They just threw champagne in her face, then try to wipe her makeup off. Then Deanna Perrazzo running out to help uh, to run off Tony. And then Thunder, not real, because she's got champagne in her eyes and makeup probably too, um, not realizing who was trying to help her up and throwing her arm out back at her. And Deanna being like, you know what? Screw you. So, I mean, I still think... I don't think we're actually going to get to it, but I thought we were going to do the triple threat. Tony versus Deanna versus versus Thunder Rosa. And it, I like that Deanna's still orbiting this whole thing. We'll see how much uh, comes out of that with this. Uh, for, for those of you that ever, I, I like to see it on Twitter a lot. I'm asking about the behind the curtain episode and seeing yeah. when the hell that'll draw. I was sincerely like excited to watch that. I, I'm um, I'm very excited to see at least what they say um, prompted the pivot, what their plans were, if the pivot didn't happen, all that. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I'll I'll put in a, a request for that right now. Actually, Sarah Noble says technically, I believe that the legal term is affray. Goddamn, Bobby White says, look again. He pushed him and pulled his hair. Listen, but uh, listen, friend, I watch a whole lot of investigation discovery. And unfortunately, <laughs> uh, despite that, I am no better at breaking down the yeah. Yeah. 144p quality footage. The, the most offensive thing about what I saw is the shit I feel like people could get away with. The crimes I feel like people yeah. could commit at Wembley and get away with it. Yeah. Plausible deniability. Wembley. Mm -hmm. you, you're selling like. 70,000 tickets all the time. Right. Get some good cameras. What are yeah. we doing here? Better tech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. Rodolfo says, in my humble opinion, this video does nothing. At least it's out there and both sides share their views. 
now AEW needs to give us some good storylines so the fans can remain invested. That's where I'm at. Give me a hit. Give me a hot angle. That's what I want. More than any of this shit, this is what I want. Listen, it, 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 everybody's got their own thing. But, like, when I'm watching um, Osprey versus Danielson on the 21st, you, yeah. this will be the furthest thing from my mind. You yeah. know what I mean? Get to what everyone who loves you loves about you. The great matches. And the storylines that are... I honestly think the Samoa Joe and Swerve thing is is a great storyline going into that huge match where we all anticipate we're crowning a brand new champion who's a white hot character in wrestling. On the same night, we're getting Osprey versus Danielson, the best in the world versus the best to ever do it. Like those are the things we're, we're, I think that we're wanting to be able to see. Not to mention, we're getting to see Bucks versus FTR again. Like the two best tag teams in the world, in a lot of people's minds, there's a lot of great stuff that we're going to get to see on that night. Meet Norma says if Drew comes out in a vest and pants with tassels and does the Bucks pose, I'll go vegan for the rest of the year. <laughs> That'd be great. I would love it. He says, give him money in the bank and uh, let him cook. Terminal Bliss says, a man taped up, ready to fight. No one knows Tony's mindset or understanding of a trained man in your face. Right. Yeah, that's where I am. Like, uh, Brandon says, love the hyperbole, fellas. Keep it up. You're selling this better than Dolph Ziggler. Allison, I don't know what hyperbole there's been I here. Don't even, I don't know what we're selling. Yeah. Uh, Dylan says, heels did their job. They got the crowd to chant for CM Punk. Feeling restored? I think, unless I miss something, I feel like these Punk chants are a little overstated. Like, he's tweet, he's trend. We well, he knew he was going to trend on Twitter tonight. Is this like a surprise or something? Yeah. Uh, Kise says, do you think punk grabbed touch Tony when he walked over to him? I don't want to speculate on that. Cause I don't think that's responsible. Um, he says hero went between punk and Tony looked to be grabbing at punk's arm. Again, I don't want to speculate on that because I don't think that's, I don't think that's fair to see him punk if he did or didn't, uh, unless I know I've never been told that. So I just don't want to sit there and put that out there because a lot of times people will take things that I assume or mm -hmm. speculate on and report as if I, if I, I said it happened. Any chance someone can ask if Triple H expects Punk to handle NXT talent the way he tried to handle Perry? Okay, so it, it's pretty clear that Punk has an affinity and an affection for the developmental territory and helping cultivate talent. It's something he's passionate about. I can tell you that if he ever does anything like that in WWE, he would never have an opportunity at that position, I don't no. think. No, I don't think so. And I think that that is probably something that he wants to do after his wrestling career. So yeah. I just don't think we're going to have these issues in WWE. No. Blake says, it's backfired on Tony hard. Punk didn't touch Tony. You don't know that, Blake. He says, if he did, then we can understand Tony's point. All he did had to do is act like a boss. He literally contacted somebody to inform Jack Perry to get out of the building. It's just... Mm -hmm. That we're talking like Jack Perry had not yet returned to his locker room after his match. Right. Pro Wrestling Podcast says the punk guy is pretty polarizing. A eh? yeah. James says he still hasn't figured out why Jack got suspended that long. And Fink Neo says if you watch it in slow mo, punk gets Joe with a right hook at the end. Again, like man, that, that quality is so bad. I can't really uh -huh. make much of that. Right. DJ says, is this AEW's that'll put butts in seats moment? No, I don't think so. Um, WCW was just over two years away from completely dying at that point. Right. Yeah. Completely dying. I don't think that's going to happen here. T Sipper says, well, on the bright side, Punk didn't lie. And hopefully folks stayed around long enough to watch the rest of the show. I'm glad you're taking a sunny disposition from it. WrestleVid says in the aerial interview, Punk said this something to the effect of, I walked up to Jack and asked, why do you do this internet shit? And Jack says, if you have a problem, do something. Seems like it happened as Punk described. Again, we didn't have audio. I can't we assume don't, that. We don't, I, don't, we don't have I, I can't so. assume that. Now, if Jack Perry comes out and says, yeah, that's exactly what was said, well, yeah. that, then that's much different than the all-out fight the year before where there's it's you know the subject of much more controversy. But I don't know if Jack Perry will talk about it. I know that Jack Perry wasn't happy that the the word of their disagreement had made its way out to people like me. Because I can yeah. tell you, Jack Jack Perry ain't ever talked to me outside of saying, 
hey, have you been up in this clusterfuck match yet? Other than that, I've never <laughs> had a conversation with him. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I, 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 re I remember uh, Perry being pissed that, like, there was a backstage thing. It was done. It had been it had been over for a while, and all of a sudden somebody leaked this whole thing about the glass to the media, which got blown up, and he was responding to that, the leaking of it to the media and it being blown up with the Crimea River comment. Sure. And so, yeah, there's, there, there, was, there was some animosity there, but certainly nobody had come to blows yet. Hook versus Shane Taylor announced for Battle of the Belts. Hell yeah. Rovan says, I missed it because of work. Can I have a Ricky Rainbow reenactment of the Osprey promo, Alex? Oh, sure. Hold on. Oh, brother. You can get this on Tuesday nights, guys. This is usually not allowed. Right. So uh, someone said that I'm running from the grind. Well, that's Rich coming from a man who's only in the position that he is because he grinded on the boss's daughter. Thank you. Sounds like a guy I got into a confrontation with once. Um, Mercedes Monet interview, and she is mysteriously attacked. Who do you think it is, Alex? Uh, I mean, one would assume Julia Hart because the lights went out. But also, maybe this is Sasha attacking herself you know big brain the enemy is the enemy that's right no but like she she staged the whole thing to make it look like julia attacked her but she really didn't i don't know probably julia it's probably julia dante says it doesn't matter that punk stood on business he assaulted a co-worker and initially the reports uh were that perry was the aggressor and that he wasn't AEW did a good job parlaying this into a story to put some heat on Buck FTR. Well, the original recountings of the story came from one CM Punk. Mm -hmm. uh, Maddie Nice says, I'm a fan of AEW, so I like seeing the footage. Uh, it's 2024, so no one changes their opinion anymore on anything, so it was shown for the fans. Yeah, this is a morbid curiosity thing for me. Like, I didn't expect anybody to really change their mind. It went down pretty well the way that we thought it would. I don't think any different of CM Punk or Jack Perry or Tony Khan or anybody. Uh, the only thing that I think of is like, man, Chris Hero is the purest soul in pro wrestling. And what a wonderful guy that he is because the immediate reaction on his face was that of concern. Yes. People talk about who comes out looking good. Chris Hero comes out looking good yeah, he does. in all of this. Yeah. Some stupid punk says, all I know is my dad's got a plumbing business and he used to fight fridges all the time. <laughs> Force of Will says, sorry, Sean, regardless of what was said by Jack, there's no reason for punk to escalate the situation to assault. Well, I've never heard that Jack said anything to escalate it to that. But yes, there are absolutely 100% verbal things that could be said that could lead somebody uh, to physically right. attack you. I'm right. sorry, but yes, there, there absolutely are. Um, I don't know that any of those happened, but you're not going to sit here and say, no, no matter what you say, violence isn't the answer. That that just, sorry, I don't get down with that. Bad Robot says, no audio make me think what Punk said, uh, Jack said. He did. Otherwise, why was he suspended when he was the victim? There were a whole lot of people suspended after Brawl Out that mm -hmm. just made contact. Now, yeah. this long? Egregious. Grim Spider says this episode was ass, and this is all caps. The crowd, match card, the video, Jesus Christ. I think it's did more harm than good. Still with AEW, but geez. I think that it was only an overreaction because he didn't turn his caps lock off. We appreciate yeah, you though. Yeah. Kay Bill says, looking at it objectively, the fact that people are defending Punk is insane. He physically instigated and assaulted a coworker before moving towards Tony. An outside law firm with no ties to AEW said it was a fireable offense with cause. It can't be defended. Specifically, it was the disciplinary committee, which is made up of... Uh, Right. Brian Danielson and a couple of attorneys. And yes, they did determine that uh, he should have been let go. Yeah. Chance says hardcore CM Punk fans are the same people who are hardcore John Jones fans. The similarities are uncanny. Nothing will change their opinion on them. Now, listen, I, I, I used to be a big John Jones fan. I don't see the similarities here. Now, they're... Let me play devil's advocate for CM Punk. The things that could ever be conceived as possibly crimes or within an adrenaline-fueled workplace, at least. The mm -hmm. things that John Jones has done 
Right. No, are, I'm not comparing the two. Yeah. Well, I could not possibly compare those two. Right. I could right. not. Like that, that come on now. Yeah. And and John ain't stopping by the sounds of it. Sure. Jambeard says this also felt pretty uh, te- petty by TK to air it. I got similar vibes when Vince said Brett screwed Brett. Listen, that worked out pretty well for Vince. I don't think it's going to work out as well for Tony. No. But Johnny says the FTR promo pushed the story to the reason, pushed the story reason in the clip. Bucks are really good heels. FTR said what most same people say, move on, it's been eight months. That's where I land on this. I'm like, right. FTR are the voices of reason. Young Bucks are the yeah. smarmy assholes bringing it up with right. the storyline uh, and making yeah. an excuse off of it. As as they tweeted, EV Petty. So yes. like they they are the bad guys here who are showing the footage and trying to get a rise out of people and connecting it to something in a weird way. Mm-hmm. And FTR, the good guys are like, why are we doing this? Why are we showing this? This doesn't make it's been eight months. Can we just get over this and move on, please? Yeah. And I think that is the reaction that they want everyone to actually have, which is which begs the diff, begs the question: Why show it as a framing device by the heels? Because yeah. that you made the choice to show it for your own reasons, but the, those reasons have been co-opted by the it's... heels, and then you have the baby faces come out and go, "Why are we watching this?" It's like when, it's like when WWE sucked real bad, and the McMahon's came out and said, "Baron Corbin, you're fired as kayfabe GM." And we're like, "Hey yo, this is all Baron Corbin's fault." We're like, "Hey yo, first off, you just hired Paige for this role. What did she do? We know she don't book the show, but right. at least in this situation, I'm sure the Bucks were like, "Yeah, fuck it, do it." Right. Shadester says, "My theory is Tony aired it for the Drew promo that will come out." Yeah, maybe Tony's just really into Drew McIntyre right now. Yeah. Uh, also, the Bucks were amazing, and FTR promo were fire. Yeah, I do think the Bucks were great here. I thought FTR was great there too. TK yeah. should have dealt with the brawl first properly, and the the second wouldn't have happened. It comes across as weak as a boss. Why wait months? Uh, uh, showing this, everyone sucks with this. Well, I beyond the first brawl being handled correctly, I think that things should have been handled correctly well before that. Right. When you've got a top star, whether you think he is right or wrong addressing this, you need to address it. You need to say, well, here's why we are taking action or here's why we're not taking action. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel like that communication was necessarily there with CM Punk. So I don't, I don't feel, and I can tell you there had been other situations at that period where, there were some people that felt like their concerns weren't addressed, whether regardless of what it may be. And then after that is why you would see Tony Khan delegate to a lot more people between he and talent, because it was very clear that that needed to happen. Uh, I just wish there would have been better communication all the way through. Um, that way we would be talking about, you know, CMFTR versus the elite instead of what we're talking about now, as nice as it is for our business. I sincerely don't like covering this shit. I like covering the fun stuff because as we see with WWE and when AEW is white hot, people show up and watch our shows when that happens. Like, yeah. And, you know, for a lot of people saying, was it worth it for AEW? I can tell you right now, we've got about three times as many viewers as what we usually do. I don't think AEW will. Yeah. But I do think they'll probably see some sort of bump for that period. Mm Mm-hmm. Supermost says, my biggest problem was the footage didn't work in terms of making storyline in a way. Punk was proved to be right, even though the action was wrong. I don't disagree with that either. That's why I see it as an excuse to have just run it, because they could have just said that happened. Yes. And it would have worked effectively. Steven Yeager says, using the GTS in Chicago as his new finisher, but calling it the GTFO would be good heat. Listen, Mm. Jack Perry is a smaller individual. I, I mean, I think he could pull it off, but can you see Jack screwing? I think he could do it to Shota, but I don't know about other people, depending on Could you see played. Jack screwing the Bucks for his suspension and going babyface out of it? Huh. What do you think I mean, about I, that one, Alex? Uh, I mean, I guess, but I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's, we. I, I guess we could see, but that... He's he's been doing some pretty solid work, and I like the uh, the 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 name the scapegoat. 
Um, I, basically, I just kind of want to see the Young Bucks take him under their wing. And I think that would be a cool thing. Eventually, obviously, if he if he ends up yeah. teaming with the Young Bucks, they'll break up and he'll go baby face eventually. So maybe I want to see them together as a unit first. Guys, please leave a thumbs up on this video. RJA says, I miss Britt. I think she misses wrestling too. Yeah. Raphael says, where has Under Undisputed Kingdom have been? Has that faction angle lost all momentum behind it? Adam Cole ain't back yet. And I think that that's a big that, thing that, slowing their momentum. Yeah, I think they thought they might be able to have him back by now. And they don't. And he's, yeah. Sarah says, SRS to win Clusterfuck 2025. Book at GCW. Hey, I'm trying. I'm entering every battle royal I can to win one. I'm in one. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, April 21st, the same day as Dynasty, but that afternoon, Jeffersonville, Indiana at Paul Cade. Uh, we are doing it to benefit the Humane Society of Washington. Please make a nice donation over there. Uh, I, I worked Monster Factory and Squared Circle Expo to benefit Hosea's house and then Black Label Pro this past December for uh, NAMI.org. Please donate to those wonderful causes. C. Delgado says, Sean, you were the only one not in the clusterfuck this year. I was home. I was home uh, preparing for the clusterfuck that we're talking about right now. <laughs> Anonymous yeah. says, SRS and Alex handling all these donations like a champ. Thank you for all you both do. Hold on. I, I want to say, we ain't doing shit. Luis is over here <laughs> yeah. earning his double yeah. pay. Bill double pay, uh, Luis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alex will be as well, I would imagine. Yeah, so, sure, uh, yeah, like <laughs> it's it's all Luis here. Mm -hmm. It's all Luis. Yeah. Danielson and Claudio versus Fletcher and Hobbs for collision. Ooh, that's a humper. That'll that is a humper. That'll be fun. We still got plenty, guys, so we're here for a bit. Star Killer says, I know she's wrestling at double or nothing, but is Mercedes still not cleared? I'm of the belief she should be on this show way more. I feel like there are some physical limitations because when I got word that she was coming in, I was told that they did not expect her to wrestle until double or nothing. Hmm. And originally, as we reported on FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business, please subscribe. I'll plug it later. She wasn't, they didn't expect her to be there for double or nothing. And, and that's one of the reasons they decided against January debuting her. Cause they're like, man, March is going to be hard enough, but January. Yeah. That's rough. I mean, there, there's there's no shortage of of opponents you could work for her. Like, I yeah. if she was if she was cleared, if she's gonna face Willow at Double or Nothing, her facing Statlander at Dynasty, Willow's yeah. partner and friend is a really great way to do it. I think her and Stat would be a great match. If she's not cleared, that sucks. But there are a lot of cool people you could have her wrestle right now. What do you think of Tony Giovanni's body language before and after the clip? If I were a betting man, I would say he he knew what was coming and he was just responding in a way that would get us talking. And fortunately, I am a betting man. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about betonline.ag, the official betting partner of Fightful. It's not just an online platform. They've been trusted for over 25 years. They boast a focus on the player approach and have built their reputation on offering their clients nothing but the best. From cutting edge technology to enticing promotions and the latest sports betting odds. Whether it be wrestling, MMA, boxing, or football, baseball, basketball, or racing, anything you can think of, all major sporting events are covered by betonline.ag. Fast payouts, highest credit card acceptance industry-wide, safe and secure online environments, and their live betting feature allows you to bet on your favorites weekly and easily and in real time. Betonline.ag. That's where we're going at Fightful. That's where we suggest you go as well. That's where we get all of our odds at. Betonline.ag. Only bet what you can and please bet responsibly. Oh, man. Let's keep getting to it. We, we got plenty, plenty here. Where are we at? Ryan says, seems like it did more harm than good for AEW. Majority of online opinion seems to be AEW shouldn't have shown the clip. And positive sentiment towards Punk. I also don't think it added anything to FTR Bucks. I completely disagree that it didn't add anything to FTR and Bucks. I thought it was fun, TV, that. I, I didn't, the thing is, I didn't need the clip for that. I didn't need the clip. Now, I understand I understand why FT, it fired up FTR a little bit more. So that, I think it added to the impassioned part. And it wasn't because you, that's the thing. It's It was like Young Bucks preemptively gaslit them. Yeah, by showing this footage because like there was no reason to do it in character. Right. They did it and FTR like 
you're you're saying it's because he's our buddy. We're mad because you're wasting time on this wrestling show, like everybody else is saying. Mm-hmm. We were already gonna have a great match. We already were gonna do this. The right. tag team titles were enough for us to want to beat your ass. Why are you doing this? Right. So I thought I thought that they did a good job playing off of that at least. Yeah, I mean, also that they they've done a good job about talking about you know the history. They did that today, showing clips from all the matches they've had against each other. It's now two to one, FTR. So I would assume we get the Bucks winning this next one, so that we have a definitive best out of five without it being described as a best out of five. Um, it's yeah. been eight months since the last one. I feel like if you do another one at the end of this year or sometime in the in maybe revolution next year and say, that's it. Whoever wins that is the better of the two teams. Uh, I think that kind of, that could be a lot of fun as well. Jam Beard says the footage made me less interested in the bucks now. And I only got into their characters is basically pointless for this to be on TV. It didn't affect me with the bucks at all. I mean, especially if you know that they were instructed to air it. Michael Carson says, I love AEW, but it showed me how out of control things are backstage. It's a bad idea to air this footage. Out of control. I mean, it was the guy from the top. He made the decision. I mean, this isn't like like a mutiny backstage and they shoved a VHS into the VCR and they're like, no, play it. It was Tony. Tony did it. Yeah. Trey Cash sent a very generous Humper chat and said, I love AEW and I love the Elite, but Punk is my favorite wrestler. That being said, it was bad. Made me lose respect for AEW and TK. I don't want to feel that way, but it was very much felt like a cheap ratings grab. Oh, it was a cheap ratings grab, 100%. And I mean, if it made you lose respect for AEW, again, who am I to tell you how to feel? Um, There are a lot of people that saw it as a waste of time, felt like they were just drubbing it up, all that stuff. But yeah. Uh, Nisess, I ain't reading that one. I ain't putting over the dipshit that wrote that. Sorry, but I just want to say I appreciate you. Uh, but I'm not going to put over that weirdo that, that wrote what you're talking about. Yeah. I like Jeremiah Lasky says, I think this is an everyone is wrong situation besides Chris hero. He's great. Yeah. Landon Gossett said, I'm tired of all this punk stuff. Everyone is the only way to make it go away is to make Jeff Jarrett the next champion. <laughs> that's the only option. Is that the only option? If, if that's the only option, I might actually take it to make this. You know what? You know what I that sounds like? have to hear about any of that again. I might actually take it. You know what that sounds like? WCW 2000. <laughs> Irene says, this all-in footage is the ultimate <laughs> IWC Rorschach test. Irene, listen, I Rorschach. know some of those words. Rorschach. Rorschach test right now. Rorschach. The amount of folks merely echoing their anti-punk or anti-AW extremes is the ultimate gotcha. It's both hilarious and sad. Oh man, I can't. I'm gonna wake up to so many comments just like what she's saying that are saying I'm glazing AEW, glazing CM Punk, letting him off the hook. Here's the thing I don't really give a fuck that much. I don't really right. care that much about this. It happened. I heard what happened months ago, told you guys what happened months ago. Then they just aired footage of what we all thought happened, and it happened pretty well the way that we thought. Cardwiz says, Was the incident where Tony feared for his life that Lunge Punk did at the end of the video or a separate incident? after Punk had his match with Joe. That I don't know. But I mean, I could definitely see where in that situation, Tony would have felt threatened. Jordan says, I need Perry screwing FTR out of their titles. They try to confront him backstage and Buck stop them and say, not this time, you punks. (laughs) That would be funny. That would be funny. Oh, how does Jack get out of Chicago alive on Friday? Oh, boy. That That's should be fun. Gonna be lot, that's going to be a lot of fun for him. It's be a lot of fun. He's going to have a lot of heel heat. Dustin Rhodes interview, by the way. Samoa Joe defeated Dustin Rhodes. I, I just thought it was really brilliant of them to do a Dustin Rhodes match against Joe yes. this week. Yes. Uh, because Dustin brings a big fight to every one of his matches. Every mm-hmm. single match he has, it's like he almost convinces me it's his last match. Right. Because, you know, we've heard that for a long time. I don't ever want to see this guy stop wrestling. I love that dude. Uh, but two LT Cole photos is two Rhodes main events this week. That's cool. And quote the Ravens says, what is it with the Rhodes family bleeding on the belts? Um, what'd you think about this? Uh, Joe gets the win, obviously. Um, uh, I thought it, I thought it was 
be great. And, you know, Dustin Rhodes bleeds film at 11. We, we knew this was going to happen. It's not news. Um, uh, I thought it was, it was great. Listen, I, I, I honestly, I just, I just feel for, for Dusty, wherever he is, both of his sons lost to a Samoan Joseph in the same week. That's gotta be hard. Um, but I, I, this, this was, this was good. I liked, um, Samoa just getting out of there, just being like, I'm done with you. Hit him with the belt, pin him. And, uh, then out comes Swerve because Swerve is not done. Swerve will not be done until you are in the ground, Samoa Joe. Like, so, Swerve feels like a dude who holds a grudge. Like, that, that guy That guy is going to keep coming at you. Um, it, this is one of those things where Samoa Joe might, might do well to, like, you know, I don't know, uh, miss a flight and not show up just so, just so Swerve won't hit him with that chain again. Oh, that's right. Cody didn't lose. He lost to a Samoan Dwayne. Yeah, I got. I see a lot of people freaking out over AW pulling the footage from YouTube and websites. To me, it is a very clear case of them wanting the viewership numbers associated with that on WBD, so they can point at it and say, "Look at that viewership number. We made the right decision." I mean, I, th I think it's common sense here. Bobby White says, "Hey McIntyre, pull your hair back when you fight Punk. He learned from his MMA gym to pull hair." But you're right. They need 4K cameras. Like, what? What do we do? I've got like five 4K cameras in this room. Are you kidding? Me? I got two right here. Yeah, two right here. I got two over there. Two? I need to get. I need to get more than yeah, one. Got one right here that I don't use. One right here. I got one. My Elgato. I got one on my damn uh, laptop right there. Look, this one went out of focus. I about to start fighting somebody. <laughs> and I got a DSLR over there as well. You know what? Take that back. I got. I got five on this. Wow. Hold on. Hold on one second. Where is it? Yeah, two more on a phone in my, my drawer. Right. I should not have a better system than uh, Wembley. Starkiller says, even if there's a bump, the bump is credited to CM Punk. Take what you can, I guess, but that's what it is. That absolutely is what it is. But also, I feel like right now, they're in a position where they're like, we're going to air it. We're going to air it now. We got right. it. Go ahead and get rid of it. Just do it. Yeah. Pluggish Rogue says any word on how the other EVPs feel about the footage being aired. I get the Finney fit, feeling that Kenny was over this all ages ago. Thank you for your hard work. Listen, right now, that motherfucker is somewhere collecting frog coins on Mario. I don't think he cares. I really, he's trying to get well. I, I just don't think he cares about it, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, I had never heard of any real issue with Punk and Kenny. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Calico Kid says this is basically mad at me. I didn't say anything more than I expect after hearing Punk's version. Have more issues with TK's booking than this. Fair. Absolutely fair. Shabugan said it never mattered what the footage showed. Punk could have shot JB with a nuke. <laughs> Punk's legions of idiots would have defended him anyway. They made it an angle. They'll introduce J JB at Dynasty. End of story. Uh, Skywalker Club said, love the show. Samoa Joe and Chris Hero look good. Yeah, they do. I mean, they look responsible. Uh -huh. Tom also says, Joe didn't need to cheat. He wanted to in that match. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I Dustin like brought the belt in. Samoa Joe used it. It's not all. It's not about the cell. Uh, Bucks say, or he says, um, Bucks are the cancer of the locker room in this storyline. Feels parallel to AEW CM Punk at one time. FTR needs to win for the payoff. Yeah, they, they definitely are. They are abusing their power uh, within this. I mean, they're they're airing things that people on the roster in kayfabe are like, why the hell are we dredging this up? Right. The people on the roster are like, we love this company. We love the talent here. At one point you did, but you're more worried about this. Now, yeah. does this heal management? Because this reflects back on Tony Khan. Because... You could argue that the things that CM or the things that FTR are saying could apply to Tony Khan because he's the one that decided to run the footage. Right. So, you know, I can sit there and say, well, you know, I can see where he'd be threatened and all that. But also the things that FTR said could just directly apply to yes. shoot it past the, the mask of young bucks to Tony Khan. Once upon a time, it looked like he cared more about these stories. It cared more about these talent. 
Now you're more worried about what so-and-so is saying about you. How, how are you feeling on that front? The footage, even if it wasn't his initial idea, obviously Tony Khan would sign off on showing the footage tonight. So when FDR comes out as the voice of the people saying, why are you showing this? It does look like they're yelling at their boss. Why are you showing this? Like he's the guy who makes the decision. So like it is, it's a very difficult thing to blend real life and kayfabe here, even though you're trying to get the bucks to be the one who the kayfabe characters are the ones who are showing this to, to, to somehow point the finger at FTR in some weird way when it's not the kayfabe characters, it's the real people behind this decision that are showing it. And so to have FTR come out, the baby faces who we all agree with when they say it's been eight months, why are we doing this? Let's just move on and have great, have a great match at dynasty. We also think that. So it looks like we are saying when agreeing with FTR, Hey, Tony Khan, why did you show this? It's, it's a hard thing to blend when you, when you do that. And I, I, that's why I honestly still do not think they should have aired it because it is, it's a, it's really, it's hard to come out of this looking good. Yes. Yes. I agree. Haskell says AW posted that young buck segment on their YouTube after the backlash, they edited not only the title of it, they edited out all of the all in footage from the segment. Um, yeah, I would imagine that, uh, Again, I think they want the viewership on their, their actual show from it. Bobby White says, rewatch it slower. Punk pushes him close around the upper chest, then grabs his hair, then pulls him down afterward. Man just needed a hair tie. But damn, pulling his hair. Canario says, people are clowning Tony for fearing for his life. Need to realize the vast majority of the population don't know how to react, stay calm, or process stress in a violent situation, no matter how violent. Not everyone is as tough as you. Yes, you. I mean... Everybody is here because we watch simulated violence multiple times a week. That's right. why everybody is here. Mm -hmm. So I think that everybody likes to imagine they're much tougher than what they actually are. Mm. Chance says it's weird to see some of the IWC talk about how to be a boss, how to treat coworkers, how to handle interpersonal conflict, attitude, era delusions. I don't disagree with that at all, especially considering how I see some of these people interpersonally, uh, how they talk specifically online compared to how they do interpersonally. Right. Peter says, can we assume Tony Khan was behind the monitors directly to the right of punk and Perry saw everything unfold uh, two feet away and punk lunged at him. That's, that's what I am led to understand. Puckish rogue said, never thought FTR could get uh, me to agree with them, but here we are. King Boomer says two clowns punk beat up airing footage of punk choking out another clown. Well, he definitely didn't choke anybody out, but there you no. go. Chris says Terry T or Tony, terrible owner. He be downfall of this company. Need to take step back in the company. Uh, Tony only reason company exists. Yes. Dan Hurley in the tourney says Perry run his mouth. Got a receipt for it. End of story. Well, again, we can assume that, but we don't know it. Tony should have fired him for costing him his biggest star. Now, listen, I'm sure they did their, their due diligence on how this all developed and all that, but awful I mean, lot of physical confrontations there. I so. I feel like Punk is responsible for his own actions. Yeah. Like, he, he, he may have been provoked, but, like, he doesn't have to escalate it to physical violence. Sure. Especially in that moment, right before his match on the card at the biggest show that the company has ever done. He could he could wait until later, at least. <laughs> Tony says, holy crap, you guys are still going? Y'all are champs and Zach is a legend tonight. Listen, once upon a time when Robert DeFelice was on these bad boys, we were going an hour 40 every single week. Mm, it was true. Back when people like to talk about wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. Cadillac, Raps. Cadillac Carson said, we all still talking about the Eclipse? Yeah, Athena is incredible. Mm-hmm. Jared says, people who said everything happened how Punk said are actually are technically correct. There's a lot of stuff Punk left out, though, like attacking Perry with his hands up, being defenseless. He definitely instigated it physically. It's hard to tell from that angle, you know, who invaded whose personal space. It is, again, not great camera, 
they were kind of moving back uh, back and forth around, mm-hmm. but right. it's just a guy just finished his match. A guy's about to start his match. Ah. Killer says CM Punk is the reason I started to watch wrestling to see him assault somebody backstage physically initiated is insane. Genuinely disappointing to see. It's a reasonable take there. I would, I would say CM Punk is trending number one on Twitter. So mission accomplished. Nothing on this show could have overshadowed that shot themselves in the foot. In my opinion, there was nothing designed to overshadow that. This was very clearly the big thing. They did a countdown for it. They promoted it. They, this isn't like some big surprise to them. Like they didn't right. think that uh, Mina Mina showing up was gonna all of a sudden get her trending number one. Like that's yeah. Capital says this is for all the CM Punk crybabies. You marks cry yourself a river. Put that on a shirt. Fightful's the best five dollars in the business. Luis, well, thank you for that at least. Fightfulselect.com. Listen, we report a lot of very very accurate news, including about six stories that CM Punk. <laughs> Confirmed on last week's interview. So thanks for that, Punk. We appreciate it. <sighs> but I mean, I can tell you that he and I in our interactions were ve- were very cordial, but it is a it is a very much like, and we don't talk hardly at all anymore, if at all. It's like a do we really got to talk about this bullshit again type of thing? Because mm-hmm. usually when we are in contact ever, it's when something terrible has happened. Yeah. The prospector says, I legitimately can't help but wonder if there's any communication between WWE and AEW. The shots from both sides the last couple of weeks, man. Well, it depends on what sense you mean. Talent talk to each other. I saw a lot oh, of people sure. talking. I was yeah. at Wale Mania and there were pe- tons of people talking to each other. Mm-hmm. Guys, get in your super chats. Get in your humper chats. We're heading down the home stretch. Please leave a thumbs up on this video. Terminal Bliss says, love the show. WWF, WCW is over 20 years ago. With guns and drugs and wrestling court, talking about promote other promotions on both sides. Where should the line be drawn in 2024? I don't I don't like it when they get personal. I, honestly, like the CM Punk line or, or the, the Triple H line about Will Osprey not wanting to embrace the grind. I was like, that one was just like a little like lame to me. I was like, that just isn't it. That's just not it. I didn't fit for me. Um, other than that, I don't really have an issue with taking shots at these people in a competitive manner. Like uh, at least in that sense, I, I, I will say I personally, I would draw the line at bringing guns and knives. Like, I think, I think that would be good. <laughs> Let's not do that. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like throwing shots back and forth, uh, could, could be fun. Um, it is again, not the eighties and nineties anymore. Um, there's a lot of stuff that, that we should be beyond now, I think. Yeah. We got somebody asking if we've seen the WrestleMania, uh, documentary. No, is it like on Peacock? It was supposed to be on YouTube, wasn't it? Yeah. What am I, what am I missing? Maverick says tonight was effing wild. None of the trolls realize that you and your team do much more behind the paywall. I mean, we not only do we have the most paywalled content, we have the most free content of any wrestling website ever as well. It says FCM Punk, Drew des- deserves to beat Punk's ass again. Wrestling is so back. Listen, I love that storyline. I love that story. Peyton Carter says, am I wrong in my opinion that AEW is the most hated wrestling company of all time? No matter what they do, they're in the wrong 90% of the time regardless. I don't think you guys remember how bad it got for TNA. I, I mean, that is, they weren't paying people for a while. It was real bad. Well, yeah, I, I, I and yeah, no, that, that's, that's true. Well, actually I'm you saying had people is, go into their show to chant, to fire people. Right. I think that the, 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 the hate meaning that uh, this is the closest that WWE has had to a true competitor since WCW got bought. And there are legions of fans who are so young they do not remember a time when WW, WCW was was part of it they're the entirety of major um professional wrestling on TV is WWE and they've they've had a loyalty to that company and feel like AEW somehow is in encroaching on that and they want them gone and dead and 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 get rid of it. There's a there there are are, are a, it's 
natural for certain people to have a very uh, vicious loyalty to things that they love. And that is what is being breeding out of this. But So that whatever AEW does, they're going to attack and hate with everything they've got without actually being able to go, this is actually good for everybody. Every All your favorites who work for WWE, they're happy AEW exists because they get paid more money by WWE. This is good. What else do we got here? And Simmons says, the only thing I took for this is that Punk did a, did take her a little cheap shot or did take a little cheap shot because Perry's putting his hair back when Punk pushed him. But it's not the whooping Twitter saying it was. Listen, there is, there's not much that Twitter is uh, on, on the button about right now. Or, or any, like, I just, people are so fucking ridiculous about it. And I'm just like, uh, hmm. Some stupid punk says, honestly, you can't call yourself a leader and a veteran if you can't control your reaction to a word from a 22-year-old. I think he's 25. Says yeah. punk has a history of Younger. thin skin. 15 to 20 years, your junior. Sure. You have so much more experience in life and in the business. At that point, you need to be able to be like, if, if like you say, what are you doing this stuff? Like, do something about it. And what you do is you smirk. Chuckle in the guy's face, go and wrestle your match against Samoa goddamn Joe. And then later, if you want to actually do something about it, you don't do it right there. You have to be able to control yourself at that point in your in your career, I think. Just popping at Jordan Patu's tweets as Eric Bischoff probably blasting voodoo child and shadow boxing right now. <laughs> probably is. Probably is. It's probably true. Tony D's family says, so when is the brawl out footage being aired? Also, if what Punk said is true in the interview, then flying off the lid wasn't like surprising, right? They didn't pick him up at the airport or check on him during his injury. Didn't want to do collision, et cetera. Okay, hold on. The airport thing. They had let talent know that they were responsible if they weren't being picked up at a certain time that they would need to get transit there. Right. So, I mean, that was communicated. I don't know if he didn't check his email or what the deal was. That was yeah. pretty well settled quickly after that. By the way, guys, get in your super chats, get in your humper chats. I'm going to ask Luis to check humper chats again. K Bills says, really, all these reactions make me happy. Social media wasn't around during the Monday Night Wars. You and me, friend, says it would have made it near unwatchable had I been around. Well, I am uh, getting off Twitter significantly more uh, after Friday SmackDown, but you can find me at FightfulSelect.com's Discord. I'm over there doing Q&As all the time. I am hanging out there all the time. So subscribe to Fightful Select, the best $5 in the business or $54 a year in the business if you want to save a little bit of money there. Uh, we had Drew McIntyre contract news and we're just going to, how about this? We're going to have a lot more contract news. A whole lot. We got Corey Brennan with a ton of NXT scoops that he's been dropping over there. Just a, a whole lot of stuff. So we hope that you will consider subscribing. I know that uh, some of you, that, that ain't the first thing that's on your your. Uh, priority list, but uh, a great Discord, a lot of news, a ton of additional podcasts, all that stuff. Manoush says, fired for that? Tony should have suspended both of them for 60 days without pay. Uh, no, not fired for that. Fired for that and the scrum and the fight that happened after the scrum. And the and uh, uh, it, was a, it was an accumulation of things. But my final word on this situation is it happened pretty well the way that we all expected. Uh, did we need the footage? No. Probably not. Uh, did I think it added something to the FTR Young Bucks match? Yeah, a little bit. Do I see the outrage? Do I think it's going to kill AEW? No. No. Do I think it made CM Punk look great? No. Do I think it made Jack Perry look bad or great? No. Um, do I understand Tony's position? I can't say that I do or don't but I definitely see where it emerged from. Again, what I take out of this is uh, good on Jerry Lynn, on Hook, on Sanjay Dutt, on Chris Hero, on everybody that broke this up and and was doing their best. Good on Chris Hero for having a, a conscience about this. And clearly, you know, he was bothered by this. Um, yeah, and somebody says footage would have leaked anyway. It wouldn't have leaked. They... Yeah. It would not have leaked. I don't think it ever would have. It didn't by now. I'd never had anybody say, man, I've seen this footage. Never. 
Um, so it's not something that I think would have leaked. They chose to run this. And no, I don't think it's going to kill the company. Um, I don't think that it's going to negatively affect their relationship with WBD. Yeah. I don't think that Punk feels any particular way about it. He probably knew about it around the time that Dax and Cash found out about it. So he's known about it probably since before WrestleMania weekend. But uh, I would just encourage people to exercise some decorum in mm. a situation we're talking about where there was very little decorum. No. Yeah. Just have some fucking common sense. Yeah, true. Alex, anything you got on this? Uh, no, you you said it all. Um, I'm I really hope we can get past this. Uh, beyond everything, obviously, God, I, I feel so. like this is this is the angle that brings Jack Perry in. So maybe once we get Pac Jack Perry coming in and joining the elite, we that this is all far in the rear view mirror by double or nothing. We don't even talk about it anymore. I'm very much looking forward no. to Dynasty. Dynasty's got some amazing matches on it. Uh, I'm I'm really excited about some of the storylines that we have going into it. Um, there's there's really good stuff to look at AEW and say I'm I I I I'm liking what they're doing. This is something that I frankly did not like that they did, and you know it. it this is the I'm I don't wouldn't have done it myself. Um, so I'm I'm hoping we can get past it, but there's there's a draft coming up in WWE. There's, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of cool stuff in both in both things. A lot of good things to look forward to. A lot of a lot of great matches coming up for both companies. So I'm I am uh, I'm very excited to be covering both of them, mostly on Fightful Select. I think we're at five days a week now. So yeah, come over there and <laughs> we'll we'll, ha we'll we'll we hang out. It's fun. Yeah, I said before this that. You know, I could change my mind on whether it was a good idea, bad idea, or an indifferent idea after this. I don't see a, a positive or negative about it. Like, really, they're going to do a one night ratings pop. I would imagine it'll go back to about the same viewership it was was before. But you know what? They'll be able to point to this and say one week, one week ratings pop, and then people that weren't happy about it will say, "Yeah, because of CM Punk." Tony says, let's wrap this thing up and be done with it. You're telling me. Manosh says, I hear what you're saying. It being an accumulation of things. Problem is those issues were not handled properly the first time. And ironically, punk seems to be the scapegoat. You don't force somebody to hit somebody yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Thomas says, was a little disappointed to see Trent and OC storyline pushed to rampage. Hopefully it'll get be main TV going forward. That Yes, that was what I feel like should have been highlighted a little bit right. more Me too. was that because that was the big, big story there. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, Thomas G. Yeah. We, we got that one. I want to thank our moderator, Luis. He kicked ass tonight. He kicked yes. ass all week. He always kicks ass. I want to thank and our Zach. other mods, mm -hmm. uh, Zach, who was killing it. Rob, who swung by here for a little bit. Thank you all so much. Fightfulselect.com. Please support what we do over there. Over uh, 21,000 of you tuned in tonight. <laughs> Until next time, we're out.